There are Jeep, some guys Jeep that guys do. might get angry with me. Well, we're here at the uh, 2024 King of the Hammers race, and who did I run into but Matt uh, Mogadam? You got it right. Uh, Desert Chief on Instagram, uh, you know, basically in charge of Driving Line and all their vlogs, right? Yeah, I do a vlog on Driving Line, do a lot of marketing for Nitto, a couple other guys in the industry. So he's been in this industry for a long time, started at Rebel Off-Road and then worked your way up through the rankings and now you're mostly just media, right? Yep, freelance media for uh, a few different guys yeah, out here. So uh, the reason we stopped by to talk to Matt is that. So tell us what that is. Yeah, that's a 2022 Ford Bronco Raptor. Uh, I got it uh, back in 2022. Actually, I waited three years after putting a deposit down on a Bronco two-door. Uh, and they called me and said, you want to swap it out, out to a Raptor? And I said, yes, because I knew there weren't very, very many people that could get And not a lot of people have the option to swap into no, a Bronco Raptor, right? We got a golden ticket on this. and. Uh -huh. uh, and one day Ford just called me and said, hey, your Raptor's here. And I had four vehicles that I had to sell before I bought it. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, uh, I went down there, put a deposit, and then proceeded to sell four vehicles together. So how much does a Bronco Raptor go for? These days, they're upwards of 90,000. But back when I got mine, it was about, I think, 79 was the MSRP. Of course, there's a helicopter yeah. coming right over us. These these two vehicles are very equally priced. You know, I think this one was eighty eight thousand out the door with the options that I got, and that you know the Raptors are right around ninety thousand. Yep. Um, but there's a big difference in the two. Yours is basically as it is out of the box right now, right? Yeah. The only things I've done to this so far are the lights. I have a, a fridge in the back, and I have the Whipple intercooler in tune. But that's it. And of course, tires and wheels. But they're the same size as stock. So I guess we could kind of go into the details of what you have because you brought up the the Whipple tune. Sure. So. Unfortunately, these are V6s, right? Oh, you can say unfortunately, but they'll give you a run for your money. You can say unfortunately. Yeah. So um, as us Jeep guys start to see more of the Broncos, you know, competing and coming in the market, uh, you know, the sound of that, that V6, some people will say, well, it doesn't sound impressive, but right. you hop in one of these things, it goes. Oh yeah. So do you know what your horsepower spec is in yours? Not with the Whipple tune, but they're saying you can add as much as 50 horsepower to the stock, which I think is 418. So I'm not sure what that is at the wheels, but I'm willing to bet it's somewhere close to about 470 at the crank. So which the 392 is spec'd at 470 at yeah, the crank as real well. Close. So yeah. they're, they're real equivalent in horsepower. Now right. you're going to have a little turbo lag yeah. off the off the gate but on the high end you know in riding in one of these and riding one of these i feel like the bronco could take it on the high end and this could take it on the low end they're different and and rightfully so i mean when you're driving a solid axle jeep wrangler and you're ro rolling through rocks and going up you know obstacles you want that low end torque that comes on without boost and that's really where the v8 shines versus the v6 if you're rolling through a whoop section like the sand here coming up to chocolate thunder and i'm staying in the higher you know register of the rpms above 4000 rpm that's really when the turbo lights and you get all that power and you can fly over the top of those things so it's a very different driving style because of their suspension too it actually plays to their benefit and here you are you have the bronco you're basically a southern california guy that's right uh, i have the jeep i'm a northern california guy so yeah. they kind of fit the terrain that each of us has right, right? Um, and it used to be that something like this, uh, even the Raptor trucks, um, do a lot of desert stuff, pre-run Baja, four-wheel drive in, in uh, silt beds, that kind of stuff. Yep. But it's starting to cross over, and I will be the first one to admit that we're seeing more and more Broncos rock crawling on the Rubicon um, and making it happen. So now uh, people who are purchasing an off-road vehicle, you know, they need to look at both both options and right. decide which one is best for them. Yeah, I made a very bold statement when I first got this car. It was after the first trip that I had gone out to, actually there was two trips. I did one here at Rattlesnake Canyon where I did a little bit of rock crawling. I don't even yep. know if you want to call it that, but 
we couple did some rock obstacles piles up yeah. there, like creek bed looking couple areas. obstacles got it twisted up you know did a little bit of there and then right after the next weekend i was down in akatia wells and i was doing the fast desert stuff out there and i made a video that month and i and i boldly stated that i think the bronco raptor is the best off-road vehicle ever built and uh, from the factory, you know, if, if you could just go buy something that's street legal, this is the best option that's out there. And that was while the 392 was in production. Yeah. And uh, I say that for a couple of reasons. You know, it's uh, for me, for most people, I would say, they are not chiefly rock crawling. They're exactly. doing a combination yep. of different types of trails, whether that's stuff out here driving around, just doing forest roads, or they're doing a little bit of rock crawling and they're doing a lot of desert. There's some mixture there. Yep. And I think that the Bronco Raptor or the Bronco platform in general does a very good job at all of those types of terrain, as well as being a very easy uh, driver for an everyday vehicle. I mean, both of them four doors, both of them yeah. really nice interiors, um, fairly quiet inside with the hard tops, right. a little bit of wind noise. I know the Bronco people complain about it too. Yeah. Jeep, Jeep guys do. Always have, um, yeah. You can talk on your Bluetooth just fine driving down the highway yeah, at 75. Sure. Same here, yeah. talking on my Bluetooth. Even with the 75. top off, it sounds pretty yeah. good too. And and what you're talking about, I believe, is still feasible in the Wrangler platform, um, like in the 392, and the fact that you have 20 something thousand miles on yours, right? 25,000. So I have about 23,000 on yep. mine, and obviously most of our miles are back and forth places uh, yeah. recreating, but a lot of highway miles. Yeah. And we found that both of these vehicles can, they can be daily drivers, do everything. Yeah. Like you said, you can go run a rock trail up into the mountains, go out in, into the desert right. at Octeo Wells. So the solid axle and the rigidness of the Wrangler platform is definitely lacking in the desert and high speed right. you know, area, right? Um, and something that we forgot to mention is, uh, R392 has Spicer Ultimate 60s in it, 39 inch BFGs, Hutchinson bead locks, um, new drive lines front and rear, uh, front bumper, you know, winch, rock sliders. So this Jeep has approximately um, $60,000 in upgrade yeah. from the purchase price. So now you're reaching up to that, you know, $150,000 range right. on a do everything vehicle and at the point you're at right now, you're still below Sub 100. 100 grand. Yeah. 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 I do believe that in watching these things up into hardcore rocks, which yeah. let's face it, the real hardcore rock trails are the Rubicon, Ford Ice, Doozy Ursham, um, out basically here. the out here, King yeah. of the Hammers, yeah. um, basically uh, those type of trails that you don't get an opportunity to go to very often. Right. You know, maybe once or twice a year. Yeah. Now. This Jeep has been to Sand Hollow, Utah. It's been to Fordyce multiple times, been to the Rubicon multiple times, and through, um, come out unscathed. I, yep. you know, I may have rolled it in Sand Hollow. Well, ran <laughs> I can't out of tell. Hall. That's not the Jeep's <laughs> problem, that's my problem, right? Yeah. Um, so I guess a consumer has to decide, is it worth the extra $40,000, $50,000 in the end to have the option to do the rock stuff sure. and be comfortable, um, you know, or do you stay with a Bronco and go that, and the Bronco Raptor is, that's the ticket, right? I yeah. mean, having the horsepower, the live valve shock. So talk about the suspension a little bit on that Yeah, thing. it's actually really remarkable that I've, I've built pre-runners being a SoCal off-road guy for probably about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had, link trucks with long travel front suspension, bypass and coilover and air bump on all four corners. I've had, you know, trucks that were 90 inches wide, uh, fiberglass fenders, like just stuff that's built for going fast. And I've never driven something that is as impressive as this in terms of suspension. And I'll tell you because of the live valve is a complete game changer. So what people don't understand what the live valve is, is on your dash, you have settings and you can electronically control compression, rebound. Yep you know, high speed, low speed adjustments on those shocks at all times. Yeah, I mean, the, the main thing really isn't even so much as the, uh, the, the controls on the steering wheel, but it's actually just the computer that's running this. Does it by itself. That does it for you. Yeah, because there's only three settings from the, from the factory for the suspension okay. on this. You have normal driving, you have uh, sport, which kind of stiffens them up for a little bit of like fast driving on the pavement, mm -hmm. and then you have off-road. 
and the off-road just stiffens up the compression and the rebound and just kind of bumps everything up. But the real magic is when you're going down a washboard road and all of a sudden, a couple seconds into it, you stop feeling that washboard, it's because the bypasses are actually adjusting themselves. it knows it's small chop. It knows that it's small chop and, and you get and razor chop. This is done by multiple computers in there. Correct. A yes. gyroscope. That's right. Um, link, it, it does uh, measure, you know, uh, how much brake you put on and yep. stuff. So like, if you brake coming into a corner, it automatically stiffens, stiffens up the, the front, front shock. Yeah. If you are on a hard right sweeping turn, it stiffens the outside shock correct all by itself yeah uh, also with it, the built into those settings also with bumps and, and dips if you hit a g out and the front end is unexpected so you get that little bit of a hit you don't get full on metal on metal bump but you get that hit the rear is just so much smoother because it, it automatically will stiffen up the rear suspension before your rear axle crosses the same that bump. quick of, a, yeah, of an adjustment it's, it's a microsecond so it's pretty amazing i did I did talk to Jason Shear, you know, two, three years ago when these came out. Yeah. He got to go and test the Bronco Raptor before anybody had one on, I think, like a 25 mile loop. Yeah. And he drove the Raptor R first. Yep. And then the Bronco Raptor. And he got back in, and everybody was expecting the Raptor R to be blowing right. away the Bronco Raptor. 700 and horsepower. At, yeah. at all, all the that. horsepower, yeah. the wheelbase, you know, right. all that. And uh, he got, I think he got out of the Bronco and said, you know what? And I think it actually had a faster time in the loop too. Than the R. So the Bronco yeah. Raptor beat the Raptor R. Yeah. And the the you know even weight from front to back you know. Yeah. Really, I mean it shines right. It's crazy. Yeah. I actually I was out here last year running around uh, Hammertown, and I ran into Eric Miller's old co-driver, co uh, and he was in the car with me, and and he said I want to go do a little loop in this thing. Yeah. And, and uh, I, so I put Andrew Shive in my passenger seat. Yeah. And he's been in you know one of the most winning ultra four Race cars, cars whole in life. the planet. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And we're going through solid whoops, axle, solid axle yeah, car. Uh -huh. I will admit. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. And we're rolling through the whoops over here at like 65, 70 going from Hammertown to chocolate thunder. Yeah. We did a couple of passes yeah. and he gets out and he goes, I think this is the closest thing I've ever felt to an ultra four car. So, and, I, and I was just like that statement alone blew me away because I've never been in a 4,400 car going that fast. Yeah. And, uh, and that was, I think pretty bold for him to say that, but so, I'm gonna loop back to some of the things that personally, as a Jeep guy, bother me about the Bronco Raptor. Oh, let's hear it. Right? Let's hear and, it. And uh, we'll go to bat. So we'll go bat, bat to bat. First yeah. off, these Dumbo ear fenders, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it seems like it was an afterthought by Ford to put those fenders on, right? Yeah. And, you know, the reason we accessorize our vehicles is because we want them to look a certain way and, and stand out. Sure. and. The fenders on the on the Bronco Raptor, I believe, could use some work, you know? And so yep. I know people have been putting new fenders on them, and that's another thing Ford designed. The fenders actually unbolt on this thing. Correct, yeah. You know, which is crazy. The outer fender just unbolts, yeah. you put a new fiberglass one on. So I would like to see the Bronco Raptors, you know, have a little bit better fender, but that's just uh, you know, looks. Yeah. Um, some of the failing points on these things, uh, rack and pinion, right? Steering. So yeah, tire rods. steering, yeah. and it's not so much in the desert stuff. I mean, no. it, it shines well in the desert stuff, but if you start to do the crossover, the rock crawling, um, they're having rack and pinion issues, tie rod ends. Right away, Ford came out with their um, heavy duty factory ones. Just about yeah. every aftermarket company has them. Yeah, so which no, this has from the factory, by the way. You have the updated. It's Yeah, all the Raptors come with the Ford Performance steering rack from the factory. But yeah. 74 Weld, it was a great, you know, fantastic aftermarket supplier. They actually take the core from this rack. They make a billet housing. And they build the billet housing because that's yep. where they're seeing the brakes is on the very ends of that factory. Uh, uh, I forget what they call it. Just the cast aluminum. Yeah, and I and I've been uh, uh, you know in touch with Quinn and work, talked to him a lot about yeah. his. He just took his Bronco over the Rubicon on 38s. You know, portals. With 38s and portals. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's worked well, it's not breaking. So right. with the right driving, this can go do the rock. And that's my biggest point. I'll, I'll get back to the fenders, but yes. with the steering, the biggest point I have to make is that every time I've witnessed personally a steering failure on a Bronco, whether that's, I've never seen it on a Raptor, but on yeah. all the other models, yeah. uh, there have been a couple of conditions that were present. One was the front locker was engaged when it shouldn't have been. Yeah. And two, the driver was either bouncing or fighting the steering wheel while they're going up an obstacle. Yeah. And yeah. so. It's when you get to those moments when somebody who's very well versed in off-road, like 
most guys who have Jeeps like this, they understand you run your front locker, you don't try to turn with it. Don't, you just don't get make your... assumptions. Jeep guys do the same <laughs> things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I oh, imagine, we're, we're, yeah. we're rock crawling, lock both lockers. Right. I mean, the lockers should never be on for more than 30 seconds. Exactly. That's my rule. And you shouldn't yeah. be going around rocks and pivoting and turning when you have that front locker yeah. on because you have one wheel that needs to spin. And, and just to reiterate, the, this has front and rear lockers, correct? correct? Yeah. It also and has the sway bar disconnect. It has the sway bar yeah. disconnect. You can hit a button. And yeah. so one of my pet peeves on this is that the sway bar reconnects at a certain speed no yeah. matter what. And if you're between trails, if you don't remember to, to lock this, unlock the sway bar again, it's go on the up. rocks, yeah. you can break it. Well, this has the same problem too. So yeah. this this does have the the auto reconnect on the yeah. sway bar. It's a factory issue yeah. thing because they don't want anybody Legally, getting on the highway with their yeah. sway bar mm -hmm. unlocked. And you can only use it in four low. And so. then your lockers, can you run your lockers at highway speeds? I have and I can, yeah. You can, now did you have to rewire it to do that or no. it allows you to do that? You can that? run a rear locker, uh, in two wheel drive without any kind of need for speed limitation or anything. So that's so. a benefit to that because, right. you know, I don't have to deal with it because this has aftermarket axles. We can lock yeah. them yeah. Uh, from external switching anytime. But Correct. from the factory, lockers go on and four low and four high, you can use them, but they turn off at, at 20 speed. miles an hour. Yeah, yeah so. this will go, I've had up to 60 miles an hour with the locker engaged. I've actually been on the highway before not realizing so it. So that's definitely so. a benefit. Um, yeah. Back to the downfalls. I see you have a hard top. Yep. You're lucky. The Bronco soft tops are absolutely embarrassing. Yeah, they suck. I mean, to get in the back, you have to fold it up and crinkle the back windows. Yeah. yeah. Um, they just don't work out, you know. I, I believe in the standard Bronco package and just, the V6 in general doesn't have that American rumble. No. Uh, and, and you can have a motor that can blow doors on everything else, but it just doesn't have the feel when you're riding in it of the V8. But hey, neither did the Pentastar for the 10, 12 years that they had it in the Wrangler JK and JL. And it was a great engine and it worked good. It worked fine. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So those are some of my pet peeves, but um, this is where it gets a little different is that when it comes to aftermarket and uh, suspension, lifting, tires, wheels. Um, when you have an IFS platform like this, uh, linked front and rear, uh, it is much harder. Like you can buy a $1,300 three and a half inch lift kit for a Wrangler, put mm -hmm. it on your driveway in an afternoon, right? and immediately change your Jeep into something that isn't stock, right? you know? Whereas the Bronco, they tried to, especially on the Bronco Raptor, they tried to hit everything on the first shot. The idea is not to modify it. It's very difficult to modify it. This is not a platform right. to make it any different no. besides accessorizing like right. sliders, a bumper, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, protection stuff is huge, especially if you plan on doing any kind of rocks. Skid plates. Yeah, yeah with the Bronco Raptor. I mean, you got to imagine in stock form, it's 88 inches wide outside tire to outside tire. Mm -hmm. It's a full 10 inches wider than the regular Bronco. Yep, yep. So it's very wide, but it does have a shorter wheelbase. Same than body Raptor. though, just wider Same on the body, track yeah. width. These fenders I was going to get to, they're actually two inches wider than the Bronco fender. Oh, they are yeah, wider. The, okay. The, the, steel, yeah. the metal fender is not including this, but okay. when you put a zero offset wheel uh -huh. and a 37, true 37 Nitto, because they come with 37 BFGs. Which not, you have 37s on your Correct, yeah, right it's now. a true yep. 37 inch uh -huh. tire, yep. uh, 1250 wide. You know, it, it sits close to damn near 90, 90 inches wide, you know, in width. And that'll be a detriment in a rock trail. Exactly. Um, yeah. Great in the desert for stability and wheel travel, because yeah. you, you don't have the width just by an offset rim, you have the width by longer arms, arms yeah. uh, longer CVs, and a zero yeah. offset wheel, better scrub rate, radius and yep. steering and drive, you know, better drivability. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I I really do enjoy the way this drives. I've done a few rock trails with it. I've been to Moab with it. I've been to a couple out down in uh, Southern Arizona as well. All the ones around here that I can get to, I haven't done the Rubicon or any of the NorCal trails. Yeah. And, I, and to be honest with you, I probably won't. No, no. It's just not my thing. Yes. And if I wanted something that could go do the Doozy Ursham or it could do be, four yeah. dice or could do Rubicon or yeah. all those crazy trails like Cane Creek and, and Pritchett Canyon and Moab, I wouldn't do it with the Bronco. I, I wouldn't have anything to prove. I would just go buy a Wrangler, put a long arm system on it, do some 37s and some axles and just be happy with it. Absolutely. So yeah. it really comes down to what it is that you want to do with your vehicle. On average, this gets 12 miles of the gallon. Mm -hmm. On fun driving and city driving, what are you getting on mileage on that? Average, I'm about 13. 13 to 14 on the highway. If I'm if I'm doing more spirited driving, if I'm out here, it's closer to about 11 to 12. Yeah, and I can, the most, the, the best I've got with the 40s and 538s 
is uh, 16 miles of the gallon on a highway freeway trip. Yeah. You know, um, how big is your gas tank? Because that is a problem on this. It's a 21.2 gallon gas tank, and uh, you get a range maximum highway range about 320 miles. Yeah, and see, I'm more in the 250 yeah. mile range, a little bit smaller tank. It's a little less than 20 gallons. Yeah. Um, at least what I've, we've been getting in there. So that's definitely a detriment. I carry two gallons of gas because right. you never know what you pass by and then you, you start getting on it. And if you're getting on this thing, it, the mileage goes down really fast. Absolutely. I'm sure it's the same as yours. It's the same for this. Yeah. yeah. And especially because you're in the higher RPM all the time trying to get into boost and it definitely does. Yeah. I mean, some of my complaints on the Wrangler are the electronics are getting too smart. Yeah. Uh, even with the traction control off, it still kicks in every once in a while. Yeah. Um, do you have any electronic gremlins or weird things that happen on this you wish it wouldn't do? There are a few. Uh, the traction control is pretty good when you have it fully off on this. It doesn't really creep up on you. Yeah. Uh, especially in Baja mode, it's pretty nice. Um, that's one of those dials. And honestly, I'm like you. I, I grew up ride, driving around a 91 Toyota pickup. Yeah. You know, it's all manual transmission, manual T case. There's no traction control, no ABS, nothing. So that's kind of how I grew up driving off road. And it's, it's a trip to get into something like this where like, you don't have to think about anything. It's like you push a button, it does all this stuff. And like you said, there's good and bad to that. You know, there's some things that just piss you off. There is a module that's on the frame rail, on the outboard of the frame rail on the passenger side that controls all the drive modes on this. Mm -hmm. And there's a plug that goes right into the top of it. Well, I was in Death Valley a couple months ago driving down a dirt road and this rock came off the front tire, smacked right into this module and it broke the clip holding that that, off. that little yeah. uh, plug on there and the whole car just starts freaking out you know yeah. everything's going crazy and i don't know what's going on i have no modes i can't change my shocks i can't change my exhaust tune i can't change anything yeah. Yeah. and uh and then i had to crawl around underneath to figure out what happened and then i went under there and i saw that plug was just destroyed so there's a lot of opportunities for things that you can do that will make you know that a little bit easier on you you can, like cover it up with a skid plate you know there's but it's in terms of the electronics on this, I haven't really ran into too many limitations with stuff because the lockers work at any speed. And, and we're able to that. get into the system on this with the taser. Yeah. And that is another benefit of the Wrangler platform. When you're putting, we took the electronic steering off of this thing. Right, you um, shut all that off. I just go yeah. into taser and turn it off yeah. and it's done. Take the front axle disconnect off, change the gear ratio. Yeah. There's actually a setting in there on the taser to click Atlas and 3.8 and 4.3 and you know it sets it's built all the in. controls and so everything. Yeah. I feel like Jeep really focused on the aftermarket right. more than Bronco did. Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to ruin one of these Broncos for a long time and put a solid axle in it. Yeah. And uh, the only thing holding us back is that electronic system. I mean, they'll kill the whole car. It, you, you, yeah. you, and, and we found that out the first year when they tried to race them, they had them all built and right. never got to race because nobody could conquer the Ford electronic yeah. system. Yeah. I think Ford even was locked out of it themselves. Ford couldn't do it yeah. themselves. Yeah. So they were, they were having some trouble with that. I think since they've gotten into it and they've been able to have guys like Whipple make tunes for it and stuff like that. And the people but, that are, the people that are doing the solid axles are basically losing all of these luxury items Everything. and electronics that came that make the Bronco what it is. Yeah. And they're gutting it to put a solid axle in. So, yep. you know, it's not really uh, on my mind anymore to put the solid axle in there because I'm seeing how well they work right. as they are. And, uh, and it can do the rocks. So yeah. it, it's just a matter of if you want to do that yeah, with I, your vehicle. This thing's all wheel drive. That's uh, right. Yeah. And we didn't talk we, about, we didn't talk about yeah. that. So yeah. where I live, uh, we have the Sierra Nevadas, rain, you know, snow. a lot of weather, yeah. snow. Um, the first thing I did when I brought mine, or when I bought mine is I, you know, did the two wheel drive option, yeah. used the taser and did a bunch of burnouts. Yeah. Horrible to drive in two wheel drive, in my opinion. Really? You know, some people could argue against it, but big heavy motor pushing yeah. into the corners, um, not responsive. And that's what the Bronco is, it's very responsive. Yeah you know better weight bias lighter yeah. in the front um went right back to all-wheel drive have been in all-wheel drive for twenty-three thousand miles or yeah. was very close so i just have the front hubs locked on the dana 60. Yep. don't even have rcvs in it have regular 1550 axle shafts yep. but because of the slip in the transfer case you don't get any steering wheel chatter right. or turning absolutely amazing to drive in all-wheel drive yeah. i mean it feels like a subaru yeah snowy roads wet roads um you start to lose control sideways out here in the desert, yeah. stab the gas, it just whips it back. Grabs the front forward, end, yeah. you know. So 
People would say the 392, that was a detriment to it, to have the all-wheel drive transfer case. I completely disagree. I, I like having a selectable transfer case. I've always had one in my, my four-wheel drive vehicles, and some guys like all-wheel drive more. And I, I, I like turning off the front and locking the rear end and just getting real squirrely with it yeah. out in the desert, you know, uh -huh. even going through some washes and stuff. Like, yeah. it's predictable when you can throw the ass end around yep. and then you yep. can get around a corner like that. So. And a true desert guy would say that's the only way they set cars in the desert. Yeah. And so, you know, as you see, the four-wheel drive trophy trucks are starting to, to, oh, yeah. to gain traction. But Absolutely. A, a, a true trophy truck driver sets it in the desert in two-wheel right. drive. So, that's right. um, not to tangent too far, but that yeah. is one of the things that I do like about the 392 and people who are going to buy one, they sometimes are not interested in it because they know it's all wheel drive right. and that, you know, that could be a detriment. And in, in my opinion, it's a moot point. Like yeah. the, the transfer case is great. We've been towing people out of Ford Ice, rock crawling, Rubicon, haven't broken ours, cross the fingers, we'll <laughs> cross that bridge when we get there. But yeah. I think that Jeep did something okay with that transfer case. Jeep stepped up the interior on these packages. Oh, they've done a the, great the job. The Bronco interior. Yeah. I, I would feel like the the luxury of the two cars is very similar. They're comparable for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, like there's nothing that comes ahead on yeah. that. Yeah, we got marine know? grade vinyl seats with, with heat, heat heated seats, you know, that yep. can get wet and whatever. The interior is waterproof if it rains on you with the top Heated off, steering right? wheel on same, this, probably same heated this. on yep. yours. Yep. They, have, Power. they have cooled seats if you have that option, but oh, yeah. I didn't get it yep. because I wanted the waterproof interior. This one so. has the active cruise control, so you get same on the freeway, this. hit the yep. button, follows everybody down the freeway. I mean, there's some really nice stuff yeah. uh, in both of these. I see the, the the Wrangler, especially the 392, is like the tip top of like the specialist. Yeah. You know, it, it can do, it can do a few things very, very well. And I can still come down here to the desert and right. with my shocks tuned with solid axle, yeah. I can do 70 miles an hour through the small whoops. Yeah. Um, we could pre-run Baja with this thing. Right. I could, you know, meet you in your, but you're going to be ahead of me in the desert. Right. I'm going to be behind. Yeah. So you have to ask, is it worth? giving up a little bit of speed in the desert to be able to do everything, be the Swiss army knife of the vehicles, yeah. or do you just take the, the small sacrifice, which is a very small sacrifice, and go on the Bronco platform? I would say that uh, for most people out there, and, and again, you know, if you're watching this at home, you gotta ask yourself, what kind of off-roader are you, or how, how deep do you get into modifying your vehicles? Because if you were somebody who just wants to have something that's pretty good out of the gate, that can do a lot of stuff, this is a great vehicle for you. If you want to, actually build your vehicle and do a lot of customization. I mean, there's no better platform because there's no more aftermarket parts out there for any vehicle. Everybody has something for this 392. Exactly. I mean, our long arm kit that's on here, direct bolt in, yeah. you know, in your own garage, shops do it easy. Yep. Um, every aftermarket part is ready for the Wrangler. Yeah, I guess if it comes down to these two right here, you know, how bad do you want that V8 sound? How bad do you want to go rock crawling? If those two answers or those boxes have to be checked off, then you already have the answer to it. And for me, yeah. it's a no no brainer. Yeah. You know, this is what I wanted. You right. know, but I, I'd have to tell you, I am a little jealous of yours, and I, I wouldn't <laughs> mind having both of them. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. There are Jeep, some guys. Jeep that guys do. might get angry with me, right? The bottom line is, uh, somebody just has to make that decision whether, if they can't leave well enough alone and have to keep modifying and modifying and modifying, and they want to go to the Rubicon more than one bucket list time, right. it's probably the Wrangler. Yep, and if um, you're the kind of guy who just wants to buy something or just to get into it and see how you can do with it, the Bronco Raptor is a great platform. The Bronco, you know, the lower models are a great entry level for that sort of thing. You know, there's there's quite a few aftermarket parts out there to let you tinker with it. I think it's a great first vehicle for an off-roader. Go get out, buy yourself a 392, or order your Bronco Raptor, yep. or maybe even your Ranger Raptor. But uh, anyway, come find one of us and we'll wheel with you. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Trevor. Yep. Appreciate it.